I usually doesn't like to present as like a, a third person in one session because it's to make everybody sleepy. Or let the previous presenter they make them sleepy, and especially in this time is after lunch is really worst time I think. And I figure out, I realize there's one more disadvantage that as what Per did, he can make my presentation not worth to listen. <laughs> so, but at this point, he has one more presentation next time. It's the kind of same topic about me, so I'll do that again for you. That mine's better than his, so you don't need you guys don't need to go there. <laughs> anyway, my topic is as I said, is about form, the theory of form. The Generally, the topics in the theory of form, they are talking about why form is in the market, or the, how about the boundary of forms. And most of their conclusion is that there exists the form because their cost of organizing the transaction is better than they do that thing, that transaction in the market. That means if producers, they the producers, they have to search where's the resource and what the price is, and they make contract and they keep the contract. And all these behavior, these actions need a lot of cost. But they internalize all these things inside of one economic organization, then they save a lot of money. So that's, that's the reason they exist in the form. And found the boundary of form also explained it by the same vein that if the organize, organize, uh, if internalizing these transactions inside the farm is the same as other companies' tr cost, or it's the same as the transaction cost in the market, then there's no reason to the farm is bigger than that point. Then, as everybody knows, the entrepreneurship is really the same really the core and very important point to hold the market process. Then where is the entrepreneur in determining this emergence and the size of forms? To explain, to say the conclusion first, the company, the firm is existing in the market because to protect the entrepreneur opportunity or competitive advantages. Then what's basic role or basic goal of entrepreneur in the profit organization? Then their job is, their object is the creation or exclusive profits in the market. And how they do that? They combine various resources, then find new opportunity in the market and make profit. But also their other goal is to not just making profit. They have to sustain this profit longer time. And these topics are researched, studied in resource-based view. Simply their insistence is the development or implicate implementation of competitive strategy provide from uh, abnormal market profit. And what is competitive strategy or what is competitive advantage? The competitive strategy is the way to utilize various resources. As Barney said, the, a firm have competitive advantage when they can implement a value, create, value creating strategy not simultaneously being implemented by other competitors. But they did not clearly mention about where's the heterogeneous heterogeneity came from. This competitive advantage is competitive strategy is very similar to entrepreneur opportunity. As you know, the entrepreneur has very unique ability or unique capability because they have some better ability to foresee the futures and they also have a lot of previous inf information about certain business, and they also have some special cognitive ability to discover the opportunities. 
So with this special ability, they can find various new characteristics from resources and combining these various resources, then they can make good opportunity to make profit. As I mentioned earlier, the other goal of entrepreneurs are sustaining their competitive advantage. And how to do that? It also studied in the resource phase view. Any strategy can be sustainable when they only exclusively use this strategy. So the strategy or the resources must be must not able to imitable or substitutable or it's not not able to mobile. But as you can see from these conditions, these conditions is not quite related to subjective characteristics of resources. It's more close to the objective value, objective characteristics of resources. So there, to make profit, to, to have sustainable competitive advantage, any resource any, or any strategy must, be, must have competitiveness and sustain, sustainableness at the same time. But if the competitiveness is came from subjective value, then where's that so, uh, where's the sustainability, sustainability came from? So based on these two different characteristics of resources, I categorize the resources in four different types. Like uh, if objectively, uh, before that, the subjective heterogeneity can be defined as the value of resource in production process. And the objective ca characteristic, objective heterogeneity, is defined as the easy of finding substitute good. And based on these two characteristics, the resources can fall into any of these four categories, like a total, the 100% homogeneous characteristic, or perfectly heterogeneous resources, or valuable or invaluable semi-heterogeneous resources. And what's the relationship be between these different characteristics and competitive advantages. I don't talk about the homogeneous resources, the subjectively homogeneous resources, because it doesn't provide any competitiveness. So I just talk about the heterogeneous, subjectively heterogeneous resources. The first, the perfectly heterogeneous resources. If any entrepreneur, they conceive new strategy that utilize these perfectly heterogeneous resources, then they have durability of their competitive advantage and their, comp they, their strategy have competitiveness at the same time. However, if the strategy use valuable semi-heterogeneous resources, that means subjectively heterogeneous, but objectively homogene homogeneous resources, then this strategy only provides competitiveness. There is no durability because there is many other substitute resources. So, so competitors, they can duplicate or mimic this competitive strategy. Then what's the relationship with the emergency of farm, farm and these characteristics? First, the perfectly heterogeneous resources only ownership of that resources make sustainable competitive advantage. So by ownership means they can start their companies. However, the valuable semi-heterogeneous resources, the ownership is not enough because there is many other substitutable goods. So they need other protective method like a property right or patent or copyrights. How many times I have to? Okay. Then I didn't make some examples, but the example slides, I'll give you some examples. First one is, is when it's tangible assets. The first MP3 players are introduced in the market 1997 in Korea. 
maybe the inventor, they find new characteristics from many, many small portable device like a CD player or mini cassette tape players. And other things like a MP3 file and the program they're playing their files in the computer. And they think, oh, combine these things together, they can make new portable small size machines that is MP3 players. And these character, these things are very heterogeneous and subjectively. But each of these resources, objectively, is not, is not heterogeneous. There are many other technology that can embed that software into small chips, and there is a, many other devices can make it. And everybody can mimic that things. That means even though they start their farms without any protective things like a property right or patent, they lose their competitiveness very soon. So actually, this company, they didn't register any patent right. So after a few years, they are bankrupt. And the other example is intangible assets. Think about the consulting company. I think their critical, very important assets of that consulting company is their idea or their networks. Those things are not tangible. But still, subjectively, those things are very heterogeneous. And at the same time, objectively, it's very heterogeneous because there is no other substitute good in the market. So the person who has that kind of resources, it's already, he already owns these resources. So he, the, the consulting, the founder of the consulting company, is he is already kind of formed because even though he cannot make like a legal form of the farm, he, he can be a single form. And before I explain the boundary of farm or size limit of farm, I'll explain first the why company has to be expanded. The sustained competitive advantage it cannot be permanent because as everybody know in this room, market is not static. They keep changing. Many things change in the market, like uh, government policy or taste, or consumer taste, or there is a new technology. So the strategy itself, the competitiveness itself, disappear very soon. At the, at some point, then entrepreneurs has to find a new strategy. They have to conceive a new strategy. The how to do that? They have to find new attributes, new characteristics, characteristics from various resources, and they have to protect their competitiveness from other competitors. They have to own these resources, and that's the reason for the company expand more and more. But while this company size is bigger, they have to pay more costs to deal with these various resources. Many, the manager costs increase at the same time, and what determine the this cost? As some companies has more efficiently deal with these resources. So what's the difference between farms? As Cole said, the manager cost of internal, internalizing the resources into the farm vary with entrepreneur ability. And as everybody knows in this room. The entrepreneur ability also heterogeneous. So everybody has different ability. So some entrepreneurs, they have more competence, they have more, more ability to find subjective values from various resources, and they have more ability to combine this thing more efficiently than other entrepreneurs. Then that means they can utilize these resources more efficiently than other companies. So the determinant of 
company boundary is entrepreneurial ability. And the firms grow bigger in proportion to the entrepreneurial ability. So to the conclusion, the company emerged with the demand for the permanent strategic advantages and entrepreneurial ability is a key factor of advantageous strategy. Then economic organizations is required to maintain the strategic advantages. Then with regard to the size of company, size of firm, the size of firm is determined by the manager's entrepreneurial ability because the cost efficiency is determined by their ability and entrepreneurial ability is heterogeneous. Thank you.